Welcome back to Just Talking. We have a great guest for us today, and that is an anchor reporter, Suzanne Spencer at Fox 6 Milwaukee. Suzanne, thank you so much for uh, talking with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here. Well, let's start off. What made you choose a career in journalism? It's interesting. I went to a school in Indiana called uh, DePauw, and I was a liberal. It was a liberal arts school. I was actually an English writing major, so um, I took some courses in media studies, but didn't really find journalism until uh, midway through my sophomore year when uh, I had an internship at Fox Fifty Nine in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, and it was really that internship that solidified um, kind of my willingness and passion to follow this career path. Uh, I then interned in Denver uh, the next year, so it would have been the, my junior year in college. And both of those real world experiences really kind of helped me find journalism and realize um, it was a path that I wanted to pursue. Uh, I also think I've always been a curious person, so asking questions is very first nature to me. Um, so it's definitely something that is in line with my personality and just who I am. I had my first job in South Bend, Indiana. So I'm from Indiana originally, but wasn't planning on staying for my first job. It just kind of worked out that uh, I got my first job there at WSBT. So I started there as a multimedia journalist and shot all my own stuff, did my own stories every day, put my, edited my pieces together, and then we'd go live every night. And uh, then I kind of moved up through the ranks to being a reporter, where I worked with a photographer, and then I became the anchor of the late newscasts. So I was there about three and a half years before coming to Milwaukee, which really gave me such a great foundation, um, just to understand all the different roles and jobs in a newsroom and kind of figuring out where I wanted to go with it. What made you come to Milwaukee? To be honest, it was a new challenge. Um, for me, I really was ready to take my career in journalism to the next step. And for me, I felt like I really wanted to be challenged uh, in a new environment and with uh, a lot of strong reporters and anchors who uh, have been in this business a long time. So I had been eyeing Fox 6 for uh, quite some time, um, but it was just a matter of if they also felt like I was a good fit here. And after lots of persistence, I would say I eventually got the job uh, as a reporter in Milwaukee. And um, there is something about this market as a TV market, uh, it's very competitive, but it's also an incredible city and community. And that was something that was really attractive to me, was finding a place where I could call home, I could live, um, and also tell really meaningful stories in the community. Um, I don't think it's a surprise that Milwaukee is, in this area in general, is always, seems to find its way to the national headlines for various stories. And um, that was really attractive to me to uh, have more experience and really telling those stories uh, kind of on a bigger level. You talked about meaningful stories. Was there ever a meaningful story that you can bring up that was, uh, that impacted you? A lot of them. Um, gosh, I mean, I've, I've been in so many different living rooms uh, of people who have lost loved ones to gun violence. And those stories always uh, impact me because they are um, really just trying to get answers and trying to make a difference in the lives of other people. Um, but one, I will say one of my favorite stories ever did uh, is it was on a U.S. Able, naval aircraft carrier. It was the Abraham Lincoln, and um, my photographer and I got to go tell a series of stories about um, kind of the operations on board. So uh, I had never seen Top Gun, so I really had no idea <laughs> what to expect, and I kind of wanted it to be that way. I wanted to like really experience it firsthand, um, but the first female um, XO, the second in command, uh, was leading the ship and she is a Wisconsin native. So that was really uh, what got us out there in the first place. And then we told a lot of stories about Wisconsin sailors doing big things for the US Navy. And I would say that was a, a high point of my uh, journalistic career, being able to, the fact that the station trusted me to go first off, um, but then being able to see something that so many people uh, don't see and then conveying that back to the community and, um, that was really powerful for me and reminded me, I think, that I, I'm in the right job. So you have been in the business for a while. 
how has technology uh, impacted or changed uh, the way news reporting is done? Oh man, you know the first thing about that too, right? It's how is social media, you know, impacting the way people get their news? And for us, I don't report as much every, every day like I used to. Um, I anchor now five days a week, but when I was reporting, the story that I would put together each day that aired on TV wasn't necessarily what I told on social media. I might just post pictures on Twitter. I might post a short clip of it on Facebook. And then I might just post one picture on Instagram because there are so many audiences and so many different audiences um, and how people get their news has changed. So my Instagram audience, they love my dog. It's kind of a funny thing, but I'll post a picture of my dog, Wally, and people are always really engaging on that. Like it's a playful thing. But I think what social media has allowed people to do is engage with um, people in the news and journalists in a different way. So I may post a picture on Instagram of Wally, my cute um, Australian shepherd, but then on um, you know Facebook, I may post like an in-depth story that we had on the morning show about um, you know Omicron, the latest variant and how that's affecting Wisconsinites and the latest vaccination rates. And so it really, you have to think of news in such a dynamic way where uh, what do your viewers want and which platform are you on? Because I think that has changed so much. Uh, you're talking about life experiences and you post on social media that last year the cameras were turned on you uh, as far as the surgery that you went through. Uh, maybe you could share that story with our viewers. Sure. So uh, in June of last year, I was having a headache uh, that would not go away. And it kind of stretched from here uh, to the back of my skull. And it wasn't the worst headache I'd ever had, but it was pretty consistent, like a dull pain. And after some time of trying different medications, just with my family practice doctor, my husband woke up one morning and said, you know, I just have this gut feeling we need to do imaging just to rule out the worst case scenario. I don't think it's something, but let's just rule the worst case out. So a lot of things happened in a way that I look back on um, really, you know, everything has a reason. I could write a book about everything that had a reason this time in my life because um, the doctor had an appointment that day. I got a CT scan that day. He called me two hours later and said, um, you know, we found a tumor in your brain and what do you do when you're faced with that news? Um, so it was pretty crazy. I, uh, I was okay. After the first couple of days, they told me just to um, keep living life as normal and I would need to see a neurosurgeon. Obviously the news made me physically ill and I just was trying to wrap my head around what to do. So once we got the neurosurgeon um, and wanted to go, we decided to go with him, we developed our plan to move forward with him and it included a surgery called endoscopic endonasal approach. So that means through the nose, they take the tumor out through the nose. And most people, when they think of a brain tumor or anything, they think of a craniotomy, which is where they cut your head open. And um, this approach is fairly new. The surgery at Freighter, he's one of like 12 neurosurgeons in the country who do this procedure. So it was a little intimidating just deciding to do it and then um, figuring out how does my life look after this. So it was about a month's time from when I found out about the tumor until I had the surgery and I was off for six weeks. Uh, I couldn't lift over two pounds. I couldn't bend. I couldn't sneeze. Uh, I was pretty limited as far as what I could do physically just while they monitored to make sure everything was okay. Um, and thankfully it was a benign tumor, so it wasn't cancerous and the likelihood that it will, would ever come back is incredibly low. So it's truly, um, you know, we had to decide at some point, how is our approach going to be with this? Cause I got a lot of questions. A lot of people were really afraid for me and I decided to be grateful for the news. And that was a deliberate choice on my part. Um, grateful that I knew about this tumor. I was grateful that I could uh, develop a plan to move forward and grateful to just have this thing behind me. So um, that's kind of how I developed my mindset. And really that helped me get through uh, some challenging months there uh, after the uh, surgery and just recovery. Uh, and then I went back to work in September. 
Well, I'll tell you, when you came back, you just looked so calm and you just seemed to really keep your composure and just, and by sharing the story, I believe probably from social media and other areas, you probably got a flooded with, with support. Yeah, thank you. It's, it was overwhelming. Honestly, I had no idea that people would feel so moved by it. I guess at the moment I thought if I could help one person be an advocate for someone in their own life to make sure that they're going to their yearly checkups to make sure if they have a pain, Hey, just go get it checked out. You know, um, like that's really what my motivation was in sharing it the first time. Um, and what I didn't realize was just, yeah, the outpouring of support and also how many people have brain tumors and live with them. Um, it's an incredible number of people, even though it is rare. And I've, been so thankful to connect with some people who have seen my story and actually changed course um, after hearing my story and, and going with my doctor and having this approach, which is you know less invasive. And so I think that's really what it's been about for me is trying to um, just impact the lives of others in whatever way you know that means to them. Going back to the uh, news part of the job, what is the most challenging part of uh, news reporting? Oh man. Well, I would tell you first and foremost is the alarm clock. <laughs> um, so we start our show at 4.30 in the morning and that means I get up a little before three o'clock and uh, I get in, I start reading through the 4.30 and that is really where I'm like, okay, have my first two sips of coffee and then we're off and running. Like need the coffee. Once I'm up, I'm good. But I would say, um, with any change in roles, this is an entirely different job than what I was doing as a reporter in the newsroom. So the impact is really different. As a, as a reporter, I was on the field and interacting with people on an everyday basis, um, communicating different stories, and in studio, it's much more about um, collecting all those stories that the reporters are doing and delivering those and engaging with viewers in a different way, like on social media. Um, so that's been a challenge just to adjust um, kind of the impact that the job has. But it's so important, no matter which job you do in a newsroom, getting information to the public and conveying, um, you know, meaningful stories that are happening in the community. So um just some, you know, as with any transition, some growing pains, but um, I'm so thankful to be doing what I do. And that kind of leads me to my next question. What is the most rewarding part of your job? I think being able to um, influence people's lives every day. So it, it's, maybe it's a story that happened in their neighborhood. Um, maybe it's the fact that we gave them a, you know, the two minutes of air time to share their message about a really important project they're doing. When you know you're impacting people in a way that impacts their lives, um, that is so rewarding. For me personally, I think my story is a little bit different right now just because I'm coming off this kind of health crisis and, and a lot of people have come to me now who have similar health problems. Um, so I'm so glad to be that voice for them to guide them through the process. But I think just in general, the job allows you to have um, a platform to deliver really important messages to the community and knowing you can make a difference in people's lives is such a gift. Yeah, no, you're a great reporter and we support you all the way. Um, but also with your other colleagues too, the camera never lies. It seems like you, the, the camaraderie and, and everybody works well together. Is, is that true? Is that how it is? Oh, we I'm, hate I'm, each other, Jason. We hate <laughs> each other. No, we love each other. It's so true. Um, at 4.30 in the morning, Kim and I will tell you, some mornings we have a lot of conversation and we're laughing. Some mornings it's silence and that's just because it's 4.30 in the morning. Um, <laughs> but I think with anything, you spend so much time with people you work with, right? And um, you grow to love and appreciate them as humans and also as as coworkers and that dynamic that you see on TV, on social media, it's all very real. So I'm so thankful for that because I know that not every job is like that. Well, let's hear where we can see your uh, anchor reporting, what platforms, uh, let's hear where we can see Suzanne Spencer at Fox This More. Yeah, so I'm on 4.30 to 10 in the mornings. Um, and you can, I'm on Facebook, Suzanne Spencer TV, uh, Twitter at Suze Spencer TV, Instagram at Suzanne Spencer. It's some form of my name on all the social media sites. All right. 
Well, once again, we want to thank Suzanne Spencer for uh, talking to us today. She's just a great anchor, reporter, just a great person. And oh, thank, thank you so you. much for uh, talking to us today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, good luck.